Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Thanksgiving show update coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms, as well as new developer feedback information that was posted by the official Rise of Kingdoms Facebook page. What's going on, guys? Cheers. So I figure we'll start with the new developer feedback and for whatever reason, at the time of recording this, this was only posted from the original rise of kingdoms, Facebook page to the Brazilian and Portuguese Facebook page. So I don't know why they didn't share this information to let's say the official discord or something like that, or why they didn't translate this to English. But luckily enough, Facebook does have their own built in translation feature. So we're going to be relying on that today to hear a little bit more from the developers. It's always exciting to kind of peel back the curtain and see what are they thinking? What are they planning? And what are their responses to some of the things that the community has been asking them for? So without further ado, let's break this down together. It says for rocks team, nothing is more value than the feedback we received from our governors around the world. And we are dedicated to bringing you the most exciting game experience possible. We'd like to mention the issues and suggestions raised through our official community platforms recently, and would also like to keep you updated on upcoming development plans. So again, that is always exciting to hear. I do want to point out here that this, these are suggestions that were raised through their official community platforms. So if you guys have feedback for the developers, you don't want to spam it on Twitter or on, you know, the comments of YouTube videos, right? They're, they're, they're probably trying to keep track of that stuff, but really what you want to do is post it directly to their Facebook account directly to their discord. That's where they're going to be taking a look at this stuff. And even better is using this giant green feedback link. This is where they're really looking. Okay. You really need to start using this feedback link. That is the best way to get your voices heard. We've seen this work time and time again. So it looks like this emoji did not translate very well, but this is uh, the first question was, um, expand receiving event boxes in more than three possibilities. I mean, besides defeating barbarians, collecting resources in the city and gathering resources, I would add, for example, barbarian forts. That's what they're talking about here. A little bit more choice of activities because I'm a little tired of defeating barbarians. So basically this question came out uh, around the, the time of the Halloween event. And they're saying like, Hey, how come I can only get the Halloween event items from barbs? gathering resources and collecting resources in the city. Why don't I get any of those boxes from rallying a Ford or from any other means right now? Again, these answers are translated by Facebook. So this, the, you know, there, there, there's definitely some room for interpretation here. So I do want to have that disclaimer, but it says since the attack on the barbarian forts is one of the key elements of the event, we want to look particularly at the forts being one of the main ways for players to get festival items in our project. So it looks like they're considering making this a possibility in the future. Future, meaning that you may be able to actually rally forts for those uh, boxes in future events. So, Hey, I guess that's cool. Uh, players are rallying forts anyway. So, you know, just getting bonus event rewards for that is awesome. Uh, the next question comes in saying, okay, forgive me. I'm going to be using Google translate for this one because I don't think the Facebook one was translated very well on the left here. You can see it's in Portuguese and on the right is the English translation. So the next question was design forts that can be attacked by a single person, but at the same time, lower the rewards. Basically they're saying, why, why do we have to rally a fort? Why can't I just swarm it down? I'm strong enough to do that now. Uh, and the answer was the way alliances want slash need to come together to bring down forts together is one of the most important social aspects of rise of kingdoms. Our idea here is to get players to interact and cooperate more with each other through this mechanism. And this makes sense, right? This makes sense. If everything in the game was single player, then that would reduce the amount of, you know, coordination between players. And while it is frustrating, right? Because let's say you're grinding for books of the covenant, right? You just want to be able to just take down those forts over and over and over again. Um, I can see that there, there is a requirement. I think that the developers should require some things uh, to be group events, group activities, right? Not everything should be one single player. So makes sense. It's a, it's a good idea on paper, but I can see why they are not going to be doing it from the looks of the feedback. The next uh, person says the events are cool, but the game lacks a festive atmosphere. For example, add pumpkins or bats to the city, change the appearance of buildings slightly and the holiday will be much better. This is actually really funny because if you guys were playing the game, when the game first came out, the very first Halloween event actually changed the entire user interface face uh, of the game and everything. There was like cobwebs and all this other stuff. Uh, I don't remember if the music changed at all, but yeah, it was really cool. Uh, so I think that I, I actually do like that. I think that that is uh, it's a cool added touch. Um, I don't think that they'll ever like 
uh, you know, change city designs and stuff like that. Cause that's just a lot of, that would be a lot of art and design resources for something that's purely cosmetic and only temporary. Right. So I don't know about that, but let's see what they say. They said, we would especially like to thank all players who provided feedback for the suggestions. You have great ideas here and we'll be looking, we'll be looking to incorporate everyone's ideas around new festive elements to add a certain something special to our festive events. So perhaps they will be considering at least changing the UI or something similar to what they've done in the past. Um, I've always wondered why they never did that after the first Halloween event. It was just odd to me. Um, so yeah, my assumption is they're just had their design team just focus on new elements of the game rather than UI. Right. So I don't know. Anyway, the next suggestion was add new sections in the commander section. So you can sort the commanders by folders such as actively used or unused. I actually really like this suggestion. I often find that I have to scroll so far down to find my Leonidas or my William, right? Because they're not max level. They're not max skills, right? They're not expertise. And so if I sort by power, it has a lot of the commanders I use, but not all of them. And so I think that this would be a great suggestion. Let's see what they say. They said, uh, we would like to thank you for your, for your suggestion on new filtering slash sorting options for commanders. We are currently planning to implement the suggestion in a future update to ease the selection process. So I think they're realizing that now that there's over 70 commanders in the game, it, it's a little bit cumbersome to sort through all of them in the current, in the current uh, way that it's set up. So I'm glad that they're considering this. Um, the next suggestion says expand the city territory for construction. The decorations don't fit, but I want to build everything in the castle. So the eyes are happy and make the camera rotate in the castle. So this is another thing that, uh, you know, wasn't really an issue at the beginning of the game's life, but now that they've added so many different, um, holiday uh, decorations, and all this other stuff that you can put in the city there's just no way for you to put everything in the city and also make it like organized and make it look nice right you can yeah sure you can cram a bunch of stuff in there but you can't have rows and you know things aren't as symmetrical like the way that i like to see them right and so let's see what their answer was they said unfortunately it doesn't seem very likely that we'll be implementing a new feature that allows players to rotate the camera in 3d due to certain core design elements of the game and this does make sense they've built the entire game around a specific art style and engine i don't imagine they will ever implement 3d however uh, you can find many creative and interesting designs slash visuals highlighted in our various decorative objects and we encourage you to check that out so i don't know if they sort of missed the point here with this one um, i think the first part here is expand this uh, city territory for construction i think that what they were asking for was can we have just a bigger city so we can put more things in it i think they have expanded that a few times in the past especially when uh season of conquest came around and we we needed new space for new buildings right so they've done this in the past um whether or not they're going to do it again in the future it looks like here they're not really considering it oh um, or they just didn't really understand the question. Uh, the next one says, give everyone the same commander in the Olympia game mode. So tactics and strategies win the game, not the money. And I think this is a, a really big thing that a lot of players um, have considered, right? If you're using only Epic commanders or you only have Ethel Flood as a legendary or Richard, cause you're early game, um, it feels really bad when you're going up against, you know, a Nebu Isangye, right? Things like that. Their answer was uh, champions of Olympia is an ideal place to allow players to really demonstrate their skills and abilities in the game against each other which will be the main factors contributing to their eventual victory so i don't again i don't know if they sort of missed the idea of the question or if the translation isn't uh isn't very good here but it seems to be that they are implying that uh, the players with the best strategy are probably going to win regardless of their commander choice right and so i guess what they're trying to say is that you know if you have teamwork and strategy and you're all playing really well uh you should be able to win that game mode even if you don't have the best commanders in the game which i think is definitely uh up for debate needless to say i don't really think that that is true at least not from my perspective but i don't really play champions of olympia i don't think that game mode is uh i don't know i just don't like managing three armies all at once at different parts of the map right it, i don't know it's just weird to me anyway let's move down it says uh enable a button that lets you send rallies as soon as they are full and so this is something that i think a lot of players have always wanted since the beginning of the game like you know everyone's here the rally's ready like let's go um their answer was one of the interesting elements of rallies initiated against other alliances that is the way in which it also gives the enemy reasonably ample time to prepare a response the design concept used here is that it basically allows the two sides to battle it out on a relatively fairer playing field and this 
does make sense again i understand that you know it would be beneficial to be able to just rally 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 and just send them you know as fast as possible especially because it seems like fights these days are drawn out so long you know forts take so long to burn and it, you just have to wait extra minutes just to send rallies and all that stuff and you know i do think that there is uh some reduction in time that would be useful but i think an instant send wouldn't really work very well again especially right now with the meta being you know you can use zenobia yss or you could use a manatore with artemisia right there's different combinations that are viable now which hasn't always been the case um and so because of that i do think that there should be some set amount of time to give the enemy the chance to respond right so i can understand their perspectives here and that is pretty much it for this developer feedback nothing crazy in here no hints at new kvks no hints at new game modes or naval battles no hints at when the official uh, rise of kingdoms release is coming for pc i know a lot of you guys have been asking me that in live streams but yeah nothing super crazy here hopefully we get a english translation officially from lilith so that way any sort of uh, ambiguity here can be removed all right now let's move over to the thanksgiving show update 1.0.52 they i I think they've already announced this a couple days ago but i missed it and i didn't really read it to you guys so let's take a look together i don't know what's i don't know what's uh to come this is apparently coming on the 17th uh, so that's really soon. So it says, um, Thanksgiving events. Once again, we come to a time of harvest and Thanksgiving. Please join us as we celebrate the holidays with some events. Um, so one of the events is might and munificence compete, uh, complete quest for seven days to win great rewards. Okay. We've seen that before Thanksgiving feast, prepare for the feast alongside your lines, buddies to earn chests. Again, we've seen that as well. This seems like it's going to be the event where it's your entire alliance, just donating to the same sort of feast. And then there's 10 ranks and you get different rewards each time. Um, not really too excited excited for that but whatever exchange for a wide variety of prizes including a new city theme so they always do this for thanksgiving um thanksgiving bounty collect and redeem forks in the thanksgiving feast event for prizes so we're collecting forks these days ladies and gentlemen i don't know i just feel like there's way more iconic things than forks right didn't we used to have like cornucopia in, in a previous one like what what the fuck? why a fork of really a fork you ran out of ideas anyway prepare to feast collect ingredients and prepare for the thanksgiving feast um prepare food for a heartwarming thanksgiving i think we saw this last year where you could prepare different dishes like you could compare you could prepare like the turkey and the mashed potatoes or something like that i don't know um it, it was an interesting event i don't it's not very memorable to me so i don't know i guess it must not have been like that cool but anyway a cordial invitation take part in a thanksgiving feast with your alliance okay i don't remember what this i think I, I i remember again this from last year don't you have to like send your march to a certain area is that right I, I don't remember precisely um but let's see bankrupt the boutique is coming back so the mysterious merchant is offering some insane deals and the more you buy the better the deals you'll receive that's always good that's a uh, pretty uh, on brand with like black friday right so that that makes sense um protect the supplies is coming back i don't care about that arms training lohar is coming back great thanksgiving sales a new limited edition resource bundle please be noted that different bundles will be shown depending on whether your kingdom has already taken part in lost kingdom season one or a later season so that's interesting so you're gonna have a different bundle available for you i wonder if one of them is gonna have gold keys the other one's gonna have legendary tavern keys maybe or maybe one will have resources the other will be pick one chests i don't really know um how the difference is going to break out here but um yeah I, have they done this before have i missed this have they always done this or is this something new you're gonna have to let me know in the comment section below because i don't remember but anyway they're announcing season five of osiris league so we've added a leaderboard that ranks governors based on a variety of interesting individual data metrics governors who happen to be at the forefront of a given ranking can expect a nice bonus personal reward we've optimized the final system to award an automatic victory to the winner of the first two rounds without the need for a third match that's always good i know i think it was last uh, osiris league people were wondering like about betting for the last match or whatever um both sides will still be eligible for the third round single match victory rewards regardless so they can still fight for themselves but it doesn't make a difference um we've improved the league uh, data interface to give governors access to more detailed breakdowns great We've made some improvements to the rewards available in each round of the playoffs. We've optimized the rewards available to alliances in the top 32. And then we've got some dev thoughts here. It says, our ultimate aim here is to provide governors with a more exciting and engaging Osiris League. We feel that these adjustments to league spectatorship and participation, as well as improvements in the overall rewards available, should do just that. For instance, alliances to make it into the final round, uh, final 16, will now receive an even better single match victory reward, and the rewards will increase as they go further. So a little bit more of an 
incentive to perform really well here i love to see that i think osiris league is definitely one of those things where if they can get it right it's uh, it's going to be good for the game for a long time and obviously this is we're on season five so they've had a long time to iron it out so far let's see here event improvements for soroli crisis say hello to the new chieftain dakar from the soroli crisis event adventurers entering the so-called forest of death would do well to beware the bizarre and sadistic witch dr dakar and his poisonous arts or darts dakar lurks with his forces in the dark forest depths ready to inflict marks and poison spells upon trespassers so that's gonna be interesting are we gonna see the new chieftain inflict the poison debuff that tamiris is known for that could be really interesting to see how that plays out uh they've got an optimization for champions of olympia we've updated the all out skill from the champions of olympia event the damage factor in arrow tower form has been increased from 800 to 1200 and extra damage taken reduced from 20 percent to 10 percent we've added a new exclude feature in to matchmaking okay and we've added 10 and new optional skills wow dude i feel like there's so many skills on champions of olympia like i just just tell me which ones are the best okay um dev notes say we've noticed how popular the all-out skill has proved with governors uh, owing to the strong long-range firepower support it represents on the other hand troops in arrow tower form do seem to become extremely passive and lose considerable offensive power this is why we have decided to increase the skills damage and damage mitigation capabilities to provide a bit more oomph we've also added several new skills to hopefully encourage a lot more versatility in battlefield tactics so that's cool um i like to see that i, I think uh, again champions of olympia has potential i just don't uh, you know I, I don't know if it's like the camera or if the map's too big or maybe the fog of war makes it just too cumbersome to deal with so many marches all at the same time i don't know what it is for me but it just seems like i'm spread too thin on that map and that's why i don't really play it other changes we've imposed a new restriction in the bounty of the ancients event this event is now only open to governors who have reached city hall level eight and above okay interesting we've added a new great value for money 30-day research speed up supply in the supply depot for governors whose kingdoms are undergoing or who have past the eve of the crusade event in lost kingdom season one so this 30-day research speed up supply i've seen this in game before so here they must have just adjusted it to make it available sooner so i guess that makes sense um we've improved the mail system with an option to permanently retain selected saved mails in your mailbox okay great we've added some new content to the kingdom newspaper system okay i don't think i've seriously read that in a long time besides like when i pushed for zenith um we've added some alliance symbol designs incorporating many outstanding designs from the anniversary alliance totem design event so i do remember i think on facebook or something they had uh, an event where you could design something so that's cool that they're actually implementing that now and finally we've added a new quest type to daily objectives governors who have unlocked the blacksmith now have an extra reward to claim after crafting equipment materials so that's awesome i love to see new things in daily objectives um I don't know why they're doing this maybe to make it easier to hit that daily cap um but yeah overall this is um nothing crazy in this update honestly nothing here makes me say oh my god we've been dying for this forever this seems like that we're just getting another holiday event same sort of thing obviously these holiday events do provide insane value the bundle will probably provide insane value so all that stuff is good everything else besides that you know is just all small tweaks obviously a new a new uh a chieftain here is cool that makes that event a little bit more fresh when it comes around so i like to see that uh, but everything else here is sort of you know basic stuff things we've come to expect small optimizations nothing huge nothing massive announced here um, but i just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on it i would say it's a it's an average update right nothing crazy pretty much the same thanksgiving update we've seen the, for the past two years at this point but I would love to hear your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of the Thanksgiving show event? What do you think about the developer update we took a look at over on Facebook? I would love to know your thoughts on the direction Rise of Kingdoms is taking currently. If you made it this far into the video, I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It actually helps the video get into the YouTube algorithm. So other Rise of Kingdoms players will start to be recommended this video on YouTube. And it, again, it helps out the channel a ton. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, click that bell. So you'll be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. Download Rise of Kingdoms for your PC for free below the official release for the pc version has not been announced or even talked about so until that comes out a blue stacks 5 is my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms so there's a link in the description below it's free to try it out it supports the channel and if you don't like it you can always uninstall it finally social media links they're in the description follow me everywhere and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace